How's it going everybody? Peter here again for another video. I recently started the LS swap in the Mustang and wanted to share with you some details on the actual parts that are going in the car. I think a lot of you who are not only interested, but some of you who are thinking about doing this swap in your S197 will find this video informative. So without further ado, let's get into it. First, let's talk about the engine. What you're seeing here is a 2012 Gen 4 60. This engine is otherwise known as the L96 and it's from a 2012 GMC Sierra 2500 HD truck. Now, there are a few reasons I selected this motor in particular. The first was because of the price. I got a really good deal on this motor from someone I knew through my work. This person I know manages a fleet of trucks and one of them was involved in a very heavy collision, meaning that some of the parts were up for grabs. Luckily for me, I was able to purchase this engine at a really good price and this deal is actually what intrigued me to do the LS swap in the first place. Also, another thing about these trucks is that they're all very low mileage and dealer maintained. This engine in particular only has about 60,000 original kilometers, so I felt a lot more comfortable buying this motor as opposed to just one from a junkyard. Another reason I wanted this motor in particular is because it's a Gen 4. Internally, these are a lot stronger than the previous Gen 3s. And let me tell you, these six liters can hold an insane amount of power. The only limiting factor on them really is the stock camshaft, but the stock piston rings, they need to be gapped. You know, when you're, they usually recommend that for a boosted application, but that shouldn't be a problem. It's a lot easier to make these, make power in these things as opposed to a 3.7. As for the specs on it, it's an iron block motor with the same rec port heads as an LS3 and comes stocked with about 360 horsepower and 380 foot pounds of torque. Now I know these numbers aren't anything crazy stock, but with a cam and bolt-ons, these things can make mid 400s to the tires very easily, if not more. And when it comes to a boosted application, you know, these things can have been known to hold, you know, almost a thousand horsepower at the wheels. Of course, that's with, you know, a cam and gapped rings and you know a few other minor things but these things can hold a lot of power here's the oil pan i got i don't exactly remember which brand it is but this is kind of a must if you're ls swapping into any car next let's talk about the transmission what you're seeing here is a tr6060 this is from a 2011 camaro ss i actually bought this from a gentleman in texas and it even came with an mgw shifter as you can see there I have also with it a spec stage three clutch and flywheel. Unfortunately, it has not come in yet. Hopefully it comes in soon, but I went with this transmission one because I wanted a manual. I know a lot of the LS swap guys, the go-to is usually a turbo 400 or a 4L80, but I'm more of a manual guy and this car isn't going to be a drag car by any means. I just want to have some fun driving it on the street. But other than that, the TR6060 is an awesome transmission. It's in a lot of other vehicles. So I think this should be able to handle a lot of power. And I'm really happy it came with the MGW shifter as well. The only downside about getting one of these is that they're a little expensive, but actually cheaper than the T56. Yeah, that's the only thing for some reason, the LS swap manuals, they're, they're just really expensive. So if you're planning to do a TR6060 or a T56, prepare to spend probably about at least 2000 US. And just one thing I'd like to add, if you're wondering how this transmission is gonna fit into this chassis, I'm pretty sure it should be fine because the GT500s came with the TR6060. So I'm thinking that I might only need to get the GT500 transmission mount. But other than that, I don't think I'm gonna have to open up the transmission tunnel or anything like that. Next up is my AJE tubular K member with LS swap mounts. This part wasn't 100% necessary, but I wanted it for two reasons. One was because I didn't want to fabricate my own mounts. With this project, I really want to reduce the amount of fabrication and custom work I'm going to have to do. I really just want to get it as plug and play as possible. Two, I got it for the weight savings. You can imagine that an iron block motor, they're pretty heavy. So this is about 25 pounds lighter than the stock K member. So any weight that I can save up front is a bonus. Not to mention about this piece, it's, it's just really nice. The welds are nice, it's light, it's really good quality. I would definitely recommend it. I also picked up a set of coilovers. I'm gonna install these along with the K member. Why not kill two birds with one stone? As for engine management, I decided to go with the Holley Terminator X-Max. 
And this is going to be another one of those things that's going to make this swap so much more plug and play. I'm not going to have to mess around with wiring, things of that nature. And this seems to be the go-to standalone system for LS swap. So I thought it would be a great option for what I'm doing. It also comes with this screen, as you can see here. This is pretty much going to be my dash because my stock gauges aren't going to work. It's a little small, it's only about 3.5 inches, but it'll suffice for the time being. And if I really want to down the road, I can always get a tablet dash. And here's the actual unit itself. Here's a look at the long tube headers I got. These are Speed Engineering Fox Body LS Swap headers. Now with the S197, unfortunately, there aren't any options for LS Swap headers. So you kind of have to guess if you want to go with a set of long tubes or shorties. These ones were my best guess for what would fit but after fitting them roughly in the engine bay i don't think they're gonna work unless maybe i can modify them in some sort of way so these are unfortunately most likely gonna go up for sale soon and if you're wondering why i went with long tubes it's because i actually want to make this a blower car more on that later so guys there's a basic rundown of the parts that i've selected for my ls swap Tell me what you think. What do you think about the 6.0? What do you think about the TR6060? Should I have gone with a 5.3 or a 4.8? As far as the transmission, what do you think about it being a six speed? Do you think I should have made it an auto? Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think. And guys, thank you for watching. I hope you find this video not just entertaining, but informative as well. Please like, comment, and subscribe to stay tuned for what's going on in the future with this LS swap. Until next time, guys, take it easy. We'll see you soon.